Uh, 2897 Mike, read back, correct. Proceed, direct Dorman, join Victor 3. All right, direct Dorman will join Victor 3 for 97 Mike. In this short module, we'll take a look at wind shear and how to adjust V-REF, or the target landing speed, for approaches conducted in gusting wind conditions. We'll then go into the airplane and witness wind shear indications firsthand and see how increasing the margin above stall speed on approach helps manage the risk. This is by no means an exhaustive study of wind shear or approach speeds. Pilots can learn more about the topics presented in this module by consulting official reference sources available online and by getting help from a qualified flight instructor. Looking at the weather for today's flight, a strong high pressure system in the area intensified the pressure gradient, causing very strong winds. Sea level pressure was 30.45 inches of mercury. Surface winds were 030 degrees at 14 knots, gusting to 22. Wind shear is defined as a change in wind speed and or direction over a relatively short distance. Many atmospheric conditions can cause wind shear. The pilot should become familiar with these causes and ways in which to identify the potential for wind shear. Lastly, wind shear recovery techniques should be thoroughly reviewed and practiced with a qualified flight instructor. In a sudden loss of a headwind, or a wind that shifts from a headwind to a tailwind, a decrease in indicated airspeed and subsequent loss of lift will result. This is the most dangerous situation near to the ground. Conversely, a wind that shifts from the tail to the nose or a tailwind that suddenly decreases results in a rise in indicated airspeed followed by an increase in lift and performance. In today's cockpit video, you'll see examples of both. An aircraft's approach speed, or V-REF, usually equates to 1.3 times the stall speed in the landing configuration. Because V-REF gives the pilot a fixed margin of protection over the stall, in this case 30%, operating the airplane at a lower indicated airspeed would reduce that margin and bring the aircraft closer to the stall. Such would be the case in a scenario where the headwind suddenly decreases, or worse, becomes a tailwind. Two factors which affect stall speed, and therefore V-REF, are the aircraft's landing weight and the final flap setting. The V-REF table shown above allows the pilot to select an appropriate V-REF speed based on these two variables. In our flight today, the landing weight was computed to be 2,100 pounds, and we used a final flap setting of 40 degrees. The V-REF was therefore found to be 60 knots indicated airspeed. When performing an approach in gusting or rapidly changing winds, it is recommended that pilots add additional speed on approach to better protect against the stall should a sudden airspeed loss occur. It is therefore a common practice to add one-half the gust factor correction to the V-REF speed. In today's example, the winds are from 030 degrees at 14 knots gusting to 22. The gust factor can be easily determined by subtracting the steady state wind 14 knots in our example, from the gust value of 22 knots. The result would be a gust factor of 8 knots. Next, to determine the corrected V-REF speed, add one half the gust factor, or 4 knots, to the V-REF obtained from the POH. In our example, our corrected V-REF would be 60 knots plus 4 knots, or 64 knots indicated airspeed for our final approach. This slightly faster approach speed will give us an additional margin of safety above the stall in the event of a sudden airspeed loss. Okay, with all this in mind, let's head out to the airplane for a demonstration. We will join the flight on the base leg to runway 35 at Palatka Airport. Again, winds on this day were 030 at 14 knots, gusting to 22. A few quick notes. First, while the purpose of this video is to allow you to concentrate on the airspeed indicator to see the effects of changing wind during the approach, in actual practice, you should not fixate on the airspeed indicator. As always, the airspeed indicator should be regularly scanned and trends noted, but emphasis should be outside the window on visual approaches. Secondly, my hand would normally be on the throttle during the approach. However, to avoid bumping the throttle accidentally, and to illustrate that airspeed changes were in fact uncommanded, I will keep my hand on my knee unless a throttle change is absolutely necessary. As always, be prepared for a go-around. Traffic not available. Black of traffic, Cherokee's turning short final runway 35, full stop, black up. 